Hi, this is Scott with the Android Guys podcast, and I'm here today with John. Hi, John. Hey, Scott. How are things? Things are great. It's springtime officially, and the sun is out longer later right. in the day, so we get to uh, we get signs of summer on the horizon. It's, it's a beautiful thing, and it makes the days so much better. <sighs> yeah, I'm. There's one thing to be cold. It's another thing to be dark, and then to have both just sucks. So. Right. I'm ready to move on and get into spring and get outside again. Uh, Let's get into format. So the podcast, we get together about once a week and talk about something related to the smartphone space. It could be Android as a whole or something that Google does or something as a service, anything. Uh, But today we're going to talk about digital well-being, which is Google's initiative. Um... You use Google, the digital well-being, right? I do. Yeah, I've been using it um, shortly after it came out. I think I even played with it a little bit as a beta. And yeah, I've been using it for a little while now. Been pretty happy with it. I think it's a pretty neat uh, project. And now I guess app or part of Android that's really it's, useful. It's one of those things that when it came out, you kind of realized, you know what? That makes a lot of sense to have to like – to have that information. We know what we're doing. We So before we get too far into this, let's talk about what digital well-being is for those who don't know. Yeah. Um, so as much as we use our phones and our tablets and our devices, maybe we use them a little bit too much. I mean, you think about how many times you pick up your phone just to check your notifications, flip it, you know, sure, you're checking to see what time it is maybe, but every time it buzzes, hey, somebody liked your post on Facebook or somebody favorited an image on Instagram, or you have an email from this person, a text message, so many things that all want your attention. They're all, you know, chipping away at your day. And uh, digital well-being, Google recognizes that and says, hey, maybe having some knowledge, you know, could be pretty powerful. Maybe you don't realize it, but you actually open your phone 250 times a day and you jump into Facebook and you're in there 90 minutes of your day. So digital well-being is a way to kind of give you uh, information, but also control over how you use your phone. Uh, how many times a day do you think you open your phone? It's probably a lot. I would I would bet I would probably be in the 300s. Yeah. It, well, and you have I'll it on your phone, out. right? So yep. you can look that up while we talk out. here. Um it's really easy to binge on things. It's really easy to slide down a rabbit hole and find yourself, you know, watching one YouTube video after another or going through Reddit endlessly, scrolling through, you know, subreddits and topics and comments. And before you know it, you just wasted an hour of your day or spent, well, don't say wasted, but spent an hour of your day doing something that maybe you wouldn't do if you realized how much time was ticking away. Um, so digital well-being was introduced and shown off at Google I.O. 2018 and was rolled out later in the year. And it started out, I think, if I remember correctly, was kind of like a, a beta or an invitation or it like was. An early I think look it was thing. A, yeah, like an early look that you could uh, download it from the Play Store, but it said, hey, this is still unpolished. Right. Take it as you will. And I found my usage is actually much lower than I anticipated. Well, maybe maybe it's because you're using it the right you know, way. It is funny because I know mine used to be a lot higher and I did get rid of some apps on my phone that I was using all the time. And I think some of that has played into this because I will try to stay off of my phone now after using digital well-being mm-hmm. and maybe go into my Chromebook instead. But... Like yesterday, 91 unlocks, Tuesday, 92, Monday, 76, Sunday, 110. Wow. Good for you, man. <laughs> that's not that's not too bad at all. I'm going to see if I can pull mine up. I may or may not share it with you. Right. Um, I recently set it up on my phone. And as part of that, actually, I don't – you know what I did? I wiped my phone. Oh, that's right because of the Q. Q. Yeah. So I don't have digital well-being – Running. This is interesting. I, I can see most of us probably talking to you or my wife because it's Hangouts that are open 38 times. 
And then the phone opened 21 times, messages 12 times yesterday. And that's about... I do have it. ...where it goes. <laughs> I, did, I apparently didn't realize it, but it, when I rolled it back to Android 9 and started over again, it automatically started doing it. Okay. Um, unlocks, not too bad. I'm under 90 oh. for each last couple of days. So uh, Tuesday, 82... Yesterday, 52. Um, those are just unlocks. And then you look at going into apps. I opened up yesterday. I went into Pokemon Go 44 times. Nice. <laughs> uh, my Reddit app opened 21 times. So uh, for those listening, basically what you have here, it's a, it's a dashboard or, or a tool that lets you see um, what apps you're opening how long you're opening you know, opening those up? How much time you're spending on them? And then, yeah, I think it's screen time. So yeah, how long? How many times opened? And then the number of notifications received, mm-hmm. and where your notifications are coming from. Like I'm seeing maps, 108 notifications. Well, that could be you know somebody has the a question about a place, a recommendation. Right. Um, somebody sharing their location. So there are some reasons for that, but right? When you think about it, um, when your phone notifies you, you have no idea what it is until you open it up to see. Right. And we have a granular level of control now over notifications where you can just say, you know what? I don't want Facebook to send me any notifications. And it's not within the Facebook app. I'm not changing any settings on my Facebook profile. But I'm actually saying, I don't want this phone to buzz or make a sound or to even show me notifications. You can do that for a lot of these things. And if you think about it, um, you know, for me, when I have a, a smartwatch or something that I wear that ties in the notifications, it's kind of eye-opening how many times a day you look at your wrist just to see, oh, that guy's texting me. And if that person is hitting me up four or five messages in a row, that kind of becomes a, you know, it it's intrusive. You know, if I'm sitting here having a conversation with you and I keep looking at my phone, that's one thing. But if you keep right. looking at your wrist, there's a little bit different feel coming from like, dude, do you have somewhere to be? Like, <laughs> right. What do you, you know? No, I'm sorry, man. It's my email. It's my, you know, I'm getting texts. I joked with somebody the other day at lunch with that, that they kept checking their watch. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Do you have somewhere else to go? Well, well yeah. <laughs> joking, and you, but, and, and you right. know exactly why. You know keep, why, right. Yeah. So this it's is... digital well-being kind of gives you the ability and the control to go in and say, you know what? I don't want these apps to notify me i don't Mm -hmm. want to spend that much time in facebook oh my gosh i didn't realize that over an hour of my day is going through this app or playing this game and not only do you have that information but then you can set timers and say you know what i i'm only going to limit myself to 30 minutes of twitter or social media or whatever i think that's a really nice function because right you can look at it to get the data right digital well-being being gives you the data first to tell you how much you're using or how many notifications you're getting but then two it does give you that next step to make it really really easy to set those limitations so yes yeah, you know what i only want to be on yeah social media for 30 minutes so maybe 10 minutes of instagram 10 minutes of facebook 10 minutes of twitter or whatever mm-hmm. and say i'm going to limit to that like i'll check it out i'll make sure i'm kind of like hitting the feed once a day but right other than that i'm not gonna you know spend my life there yeah and it's nice because it it really does kind of change the way you look at what you do with your phone and how you use it you know we're seeing a whole generation of kids grow up right now who've only known smartphones and i've been privileged to see my son and other kids interact with each other in ways that they're not actually physically interacting they'll all sit in the same room and they'll all be on their phones and messaging each other and having sidebar conversations or browsing you know instagram while they're all hanging out and it's like and it's not just kids it's terrible right I mean, Adults I mean, like that's just really funny because like i remember it. like people say like how much kids do that and so like i would just cognizantly cognizant whatever <laughs> looking around at restaurants and i'm like looking like no, there's people in their 30s, 40s, 50s who are all doing the exact same thing. It's it's absolutely not uh, age restricted, yeah. you know, activity. It's really 
it does. It really consumes us. And I think much more than, yeah, like a newspaper. I mean, yes, people did read newspapers and people did read magazines, right. but it's much more immersive. And therefore I think we easily spend more time in it. it. You know, there is the argument to be had of, you know, I know in the past I've had games where I'll be playing Scrabble with my wife at the table while we're waiting for our meal. <coughs> so it's one thing to say, you know what? Yeah, they're probably playing a game together or reading something. But nine times out of ten, I'm guessing, people are just in their own world. Like, right. And I, I feel like maybe for adults even, it's this fear of missing out. Like, you yeah. know, when you're a teen, you realize, oh, it's Friday night. What am I doing home? I know all my friends are out. They're all doing something. Yeah. I'm so bored. And right. This, the whole world's out there living, and I got to stay home with my parents. And so, right. I'm, you know, now you can get on your phone and be wherever. But even as adults, it's what else is happening in the news? What else is going on in the world that, you know, I need to know about? And, you know, I've laid in bed countless times just endlessly browsing Reddit as if something's going to pop up. That's so earth shattering. And I need to know it, you know, right. and I fall asleep reading my phone. So it, or you get the news sites, depending on if you have any news apps, you know, breaking news. Yeah. Hits. Like, and you read it's like, that's not that important. Like yeah. that may be breaking, but I don't care it's, about what it is. I I really like the concept of digital well being. Um, I think if you haven't tried it, uh, I think you kind of owe yourself to to give it a shot. Uh, if only to just see, you know, if you're using your phone like you think you are, maybe, you, wow, my my battery dies so quick on this thing. Well, how many hours a day are you actually doing things, playing games? What, you know, what are you, and that's kind of, you can look at battery usage. You can look at data usage. Now you're looking at app and phone usage. So it yeah. kind of, um, it's insightful and actionable. And I, I like the idea of being able to say, hey, after 40 minutes of this or one hour of that, I don't want to be bothered by it. I'll, yeah. I'll have to teach myself it's not going to be on my phone. I'm going to. And so what happens if you have a device that has digital well-being, it will gray out the app. It like basically will not let you into that app yeah. until midnight right? when it switches over and starts all over again. Which is great. And I think speaking to also trying to – have that digital well-being like while you're out is that flip to shh yes. option, right? And it's really, really neat to be able to say, hey, I want my phone to not notify anybody. And I know if I'm out, I can either keep my phone up and I'll see the notifications come through. It has a, you know, active display. I'll see everything is this happening or I can flip it over. Yep. And um, Google will automatically block all notifications, block your rings Totally just kind of do not disturb your phone while it's turned over. And then you flip it back over, everything's it, back to normal again. It's tough to think of laying your phone on the face, on the glass, the display. But a lot of times if you have a case, there's enough lip that you're not there actually is. putting it on that. But if you're sitting, you know, in a meeting or at school and or sitting down and your, your spouse wants to have a conversation, undistracted, just... Flip your phone over, you'll feel it buzz a couple of times real quick, quiet, and then it's on do not disturb basically until you flip it back mm -hmm. over. And that's a really cool little thing that's built into that as well. Uh, instead of having to manually go in and say, do not disturb for one hour. Right. And that's why I like it because you have those times where that one hour may be too long mm -hmm. or it may not be enough. Right. You know, so during that time, you flip it over while you are at that appointment or you're at that dinner or that lunch with a friend and you can pull it back and it's, it's at the right time yeah. every time. So, uh, One other feature that's in the settings of that, and if you have a um, – a Pixel device, one, two, or three, or the Excel, you have access to the digital well-being now as long as you're running Android 9 uh, or later. It's also available on uh, Android One phones, select mm. models of those. And uh, one of the features that we didn't talk about here is wind down. And this is one that yes. I actually kind of struggled with uh, at first because I – set it in there to switch everything to black and white. It's one thing at night when you, you know, have a blue light setting on your phone. At 10 o'clock every night, it switches over. 
it starts to turn my brain down. I don't have the blue reflecting. It's not, you know, pumping these colors and to my head, keeping me awake. Right. Wind down gives you an option to basically set it into the do not disturb except for like certain calls or uh, certain contacts. But it, you can also tell it to switch your phone to an entirely grayscale. Yes. And that is jarring. It is. The first time or two that it did it, I I mean, I know exactly why it does it because I don't want to look at my phone. Right. Like I was on it watching a video and it switched over at 11 o'clock and I thought, oh, this is gross. And right. I went right into the settings and I turned it off. <laughs> I had to go back and tell myself, no, man, this is. This is the point. Yeah, this is the point. This is why you're doing this. You need to tell yourself. You know what? Really, what are you doing at eleven o'clock at night that you have right. to be on your phone? It's so true. You know, if, if your husband, your wife, your spouse, your kids, anybody else in the house, they're in bed, they're all doing their own thing. What do you have to be doing? You yeah. know, you should be either getting ready for bed and being reasonable about that, or doing something else. Like that's when you pick up a book. That's when you right. And I know it's easy for me to say that. I, it's not something that I obviously employ every time, but I think that uh, I'm going to keep that on there because it really makes my phone – like the picture is great. It's just black and white and right. it's just not appealing. Like No. You know, I it's a couple guys that I used to work with, we talked about this a year or so ago about how much that black and white – does stop you from wanting to use your phone. And under the developer settings, you can turn it on mm-hmm. manually. And I did that for a while. But, and I tried. I mean, but I went for like a few days. And I'm like, there is no way I'm going to keep using my phone like this. Yeah. But I did. I kept trying to tell myself, if it's that important, I can wait until I get to a computer. And I, I'm, I'm in a computer all day, every day. But, yeah. you know, while I'm working, I'm working. I'm trying to get stuff done. So yeah. it's that kind of that mental image. It's like, I will push it back. If I see it on my phone and it's ugly, I can just wait. Right. But I like this because it does give you that option to have a fully featured, beautiful looking phone yeah. all day. But then at the times you're like, you know what? I did tell myself I was going to read more this yep. year and maybe or I should set that more. or sleep more. <laughs> right. To get to bed at a good time to, you know, get up and whatever. And it does. And you don't have to fuss with developer settings and all this other yeah. junk to make it happen. I, I, you know, the first time it happened, I was watching a video. I think it was a YouTube video, maybe a movie trailer or something. And I thought, oh, man, this is, I hate this. I flipped it off so that I could finish watching what I wanted. And I left it off. I didn't, it was stupid because I know that that's why I put it on there. Because I knew what it was going to do. And if I forced myself into that habit, I really feel like, you know what? Maybe I should just put this on the television. If I'm still up, why not watch it on TV or whatever? Like how important is it that I have to be in my phone at this time of day? Right. So you can set that what time you want it to come on and you can have it automatically switch on at night and your do not disturb, all that, your wind down goes until you your alarm goes off the next day. So you can actually have it just automatically turn off as soon as your alarm wakes you up the next morning. So it's really cool. I, I think – Digital well-being as a whole is something that uh, I, I look forward to seeing kind of pushed out across all Android devices in the future. Uh, for those of you who don't have a phone with access to digital well-being, there are other apps to check out. Uh, one of them is called Action Dash, and this one is pretty much the same functionality. Uh, it's really nice. It's got a very similar dashboard. And uh, it's available for pretty much any Android device. So I certainly recommend that. I I think that uh, as I finish this podcast, you're going to watch me switch it back over to my Do Not Disturb. And I'm going to switch it on right now so that it goes to black and white. Nice. Uh, So that's Digital Wellbeing. And I think that's going to do it for myself. John, anything else you wanted to add? That's all. I just say anybody check it out if you have it available on your phone. It's really cool. It's easy. And it gives us a little bit more control of our of our days and how we want to spend our time. Well, it gets you back out in the world again, right? Right. You know, hard to believe that there was a time before these things and we were really happy and we were like engaged in conversation and doing all these things that – you know, you kind of look at kids and go, oh, you have no idea how to even interact. Like, well, we quit interacting. Right. Like, we know how. Right. These kids don't. Nobody's showing them 
that this is, you know, this is a tool. This is something that you use properly and can be beneficial. And so, Agreed. yeah. Uh, so thanks for listening to the Android Guys podcast. If you have any feedback for us, please email us at podcast at androidguys.com. Uh, if this is your first time listening, we would love it if you subscribed or left us a comment, feedback, anywhere. Uh, be sure to check us out. We are pretty much everywhere you normally find your podcasts, including Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Google Podcasts, and wherever, Perfect. even in the browser. So for John, this is Scott. You guys have a great day.